works of Christ, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Let's give Jesus some praise. Oh, I said, let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's please be seated in the presence of the Lord. My time is quite far gone, so we have to go straight into the word. Uh, we want to thank God for what he has begun. Uh, today is the official launch of the church in India. Amen. And uh, as we were worshiping, I'm sure you saw, well, they are there now. They are there, so uh, I'm going to be preaching here. And then uh, our pastor there will be translating to the glory of God's name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So are you ready for the word? Yes. All right. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16 to 17. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 16 to 17. I read. It says, for where there is a testament, there must be of necessity the death of the testator. For where a testament is in for, for a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my series that I have titled The Testator the testator, and this is part three. We have, by God's grace by now, covered quite some ground in relation to who the testator is and who the, what the testament is and who the testatee is. The testator here is Christ Jesus. The testament is the Bible, which is the will and the testatee is yourself and myself. And so the quick question we want to ask is who is a testator? Who is a testator? A testator is a person who has written and executed a last will and testament that is in effect at the time of his or her death. A, test, a testator is a person who has written and executed a last will and testament and is in effect at the time of his or her death. Hallelujah. And so the quick question we want to ask is what is the responsibility of the testator? So if the testator has left a will for us, that means there is a responsibility on the testator uh, that he must fulfill so that we can have full access to what is in the will. Uh, today I've been asked to stand still because of uh, India, so bear with me. I'm sure you're waiting for me to move closer to you. But uh, this is how I used to preach during the lockdown, four services. I have to stand. So uh, don't worry. I can still see you. You can still see me. You can hear me, right? Okay, good, good. And we've got a new sound engineer in uh, who is working on our sound, so bear with us. Uh, hopefully, we'll get it right at some point. Amen. Amen. So what is the responsibility of the testator? What is the responsibility of the testator? To leave an inheritance. The responsibility of the testator is to leave an inheritance. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 20, 13, verse 22. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. So who is a good man here? Jesus Christ. And as an extension to us who are born again. 
And so the responsibility of the testator is to leave an inheritance. Notice the inheritance is being left to the children and the children's children. Two generations. Very important. So quick question we want to ask is what is, what is the content of the will? So if the testator has left a will, uh, the will must have a content. Isn't that right? And when you go to a funeral, uh, most of the time, sometimes they read the will of the dead person uh, during the funeral or after the funeral. And the will has contents. Everybody is interested what is inside. Everybody is interested what is inside. So I'm sure we are also interested in what is inside God's will for us. Isn't that right? So what is the content of the will? Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. I read, it says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain, notice, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And so when Jesus died on the cross for us, these are primarily the things he passed on to us. This is very important. Because if you don't know what is in the will, you can't lay claim to it. You have to know what is in the will. So there are seven things in this will. Are you, someone was asking, Pastor, is it only seven? There are more, but these are the main foundation that we can lay hold on. And these things must be exhibited in the life of every Christian. Hallelujah. So what are they? Number one is power. Number one is power. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Number one is power. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Jesus said, Behold, I give to you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Say amen to amen. that. Why? Because you have been given power. Now notice the enemy also has power. But the power that Jesus gives us at the time he died supersedes and is more powerful than the power of the devil. Now I want you to notice something. Now, Jesus said, I give you authority. That means whenever we start exercising this authority, we are exercising the same authority as Jesus exercised when he was here on earth. So, for instance, when a policeman stands in the middle of the road and raises his hand and stops you, he or she is operating on the power of the queen. You might not respect him, but there's a power back in him. Everything he says, when he's taken to court, you'll be prosecuted. Are you following me? So when Jesus said, I give you power, this power was the power Jesus exercised when he was here on earth. No curse could destroy him. No devil could destroy. This. Because listen, I want you to understand something. Uh, um, I have in mind that they are translating, so I have to be slow, but I have 18 minutes left. So we'll see how far we'll go. Bear in mind that whatever the testator passed on to you is what he had experienced previously. He can only give to you what he had. You can never give what you don't have. So when Jesus said, I give you power, this power was the same power he exercised here on earth. 
That's why the Bible says that at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is the power. Number two, content in the will is riches. Say amen to that. Amen. It's riches. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 25. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 25. It says, so the men of Israel said, have you seen this man talking about Goliath to David who has come up? Surely he has come to defy Israel and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches. But there's something you have to do. <laughs> the riches doesn't just come. You see, there are many Christians who are sitting there and say, uh, I want to be rich. Oh, yeah. I want to. It doesn't just happen. You have to do something to be rich. Say amen to that. Amen. Because faith without works is dead. You sit in your room, you open your mouth and say, Father, 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 let it be today. Today is my day of riches. You can confess a professor. If you don't do nothing, you'll get nothing. Look at what happened. The Bible says that this is what shall be done to the man who kills him. The king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter. Oh, that's good. And give his father's house exemption from taxes from all Israel. Say amen to that. Yeah. I don't know what demonic system I've been taxing you. After today, it shall not be so. Amen. Number three is wisdom. Number three is wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Money is not the principal thing. What's the principal thing? What's the principal thing? Wisdom. wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is the practical and relevant application of the word of God. Wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it at the right time. So the Bible says that wisdom is a principal thing. When the Bible says wisdom is a principal thing, that means principal is head. The principal of an, an institution is the head of that institution. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And how do we get wisdom? The Bible encourages us to buy wisdom and sell it not. That means to gain wisdom, it will cost you something. Amen? Amen. That's why Jesus Christ is the wisdom, is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Two dimensions. The power of God and the wisdom of God. So wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her. Exalt who? Exalt wisdom. And she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. Don't embrace the world. Embrace wisdom. Embrace Jesus. Now, we all knew that Solomon was the greatest when it comes to wisdom. But when Jesus showed up, Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. Hallelujah. So that means the wisdom that Jesus functioned in was greater than that of Solomon. And if Jesus is in you, that means you have that same level of wisdom. Amen. Say amen. Amen. So embrace wisdom. I said embrace wisdom. Yeah. You see, many, many people don't have money problem. It's wisdom problem. When you have wisdom, you know how to manage your finances. Many people don't have a sin problem. It's wisdom problem. Are you following me? The Bible says that the unwise goes in the way of the harlot. The unwise. Knowing very well that when you scoop fire into your bosom, it will burn you. Yet he's going. <laughs> so we need wisdom. 
Wisdom will, will help you to be able to relate with your husband and wife. Wisdom. Wisdom will help you to be the head at your workplace. Wisdom. To know how to relate with colleagues and your bosses. Wisdom. So verse 9, it says, she will place on your head, that is wisdom, she will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, she will deliver to you. Say amen to that. Yeah. So we need to go for wisdom. We need to go for wisdom. The days where our community are not respected are over. And how do we arrive there? The days of buying big cars and parking it at a rented property are over. Why are you not saying amen? Amen. amen? Where you buy a big car and you are parking it at a rented property. Where the car that you are driving can pay double. Double the mortgage of the rent you are paying. That's not wisdom. It's time to own our own properties. Why are you not saying amen? amen. Yeah, you see, you don't like you don't like this one. You say hey, we want we want fire, fire. This one is more powerful than fire. <laughs> oh, wait till we get to the month of wisdom. Number four is strength. Number four is strength. Psalm eighteen, verse thirty-nine to forty. Psalm eighteen, verse thirty-nine to forty. So we are looking at the content of the will, and what are they? Number one is what. Number one is what? Power. Number two is what? Riches. Number three is what? Wisdom. Number four is what? Strength. Psalm 18, verse 39 to 14. It says, for you have armed me with strength for the battle. Say amen to that. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. Say amen to that. You have also given me the necks of my enemies. Say amen to that. So that I destroy those who hated me. Say amen to that. He say, oh, pastor, you know, I'm a nice man. You know, I don't think I have any enemies. Really? Jesus was nicer than you and I. Yet he had enemies. Paul was just preaching the gospel, going from place to place. He had 40 people. Who, who conceived to kill him? 40 enemies. So you'll be there and say, oh, you know, eh, it's my best friend. Your best friend is a woman. You are married. And you bring your best friend to your house. Oh, it's okay. Just leave her there. And you say, I'm going shopping. You know, if you go, I'm going shopping. Just, just can, if my husband is ready, can you make, if he's hungry, can you make him a cup of tea? Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, he's, she's my best friend. She's my best friend. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> who leaves who leaves a fish by a cat? <laughs> and they said the cat will behave. Have you seen it before? Mm-hmm. I said, oh, he's my best friend. And you come back, and your husband changes. Okay, all right. Praise God. Let's not go further now. Let's, let's read back that scripture. Psalm 18, verse 39. 39 it says, you have armed me with strength for the battle. Whether you like it or not, there's a battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. Say amen to that. You have also given me the necks of my enemies. Say amen to that. Ah, from today, God will give you the necks of your enemies. It says, so that I destroy those who hated me. Did you not read that there, there was a long war between the house of David and the house of Saul? And the house of Saul was getting weaker and weaker. And the house of David was getting stronger and stronger. May God give you strength. Strength for the next level. You see, without strength, you cannot really possess everything in the will. 
Because there are some things you have to go on top of the mountain to take hold of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five is honor. Number five is honor. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 30. It says, therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. What's God saying? We have to understand the place of honor. Listen, for you to have access to everything in the contents of this will, you have to understand honor. Because honor is the protocol or the gateway that gives you access into the presence of the king. If you don't understand honor, you can't access. That's why the only commandment with a blessing is honor your mother and your father and your days shall be long on the earth. Amen. Say amen. Amen. It, the Bible never say honor your good mother or your good father. Honor your mother and your father and your days shall be long on this earth. Amen. I came to this country years ago as a student working part time. I was sending 50 pounds to my mom and dad every month. My salary was 400 pounds in those days, years, many years ago. Part-time, 20 hours. After tithing, 50 pounds goes to my mom and dad. And every time they'll call, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Honor. Honor. 50 pounds. God bless you. God. Ha. Yet my elder brothers were fighting with my father. And he'll be saying, if I kiss you, you'll be cursed. My father married four wives, 24 children. I came out of the third wife. Praise God. Oh, I'm, I'm happy I came from the third wife. Uh, if you had not married the third wife, I won't be here. Now, I'm not advocating for you now, a believer, to go and marry four wives. It's one man, one woman, till death do we die. I was the only one in my family who got married properly, proper, proper marriage. All my brothers, two wives, three wives, some went beyond my father, five, six, seven. <laughs> but in all humility, I'm the youngest, the last but one in a family of 24, in all humility. I have never worked anywhere but served God for the rest of my life. In all humility, if you combine everything they all of them have together, it cannot reach a tiny bit of what God has blessed me with. All of them. What was the secret? I honored my father and mother when they were alive. God bless you. God bless you. I'm blessed. My home is peaceful. When I sleep on my bed, I don't open one eye and check it. <laughs> Is my wife going to put some acid in my ears or not? Praise God. Blessed. Marriage is blessed because of honor. Uh, we'll go into this another time. So, that, you see, the place of honor is so critical to God that because of this honor, God cut short the family lineage of Samuel. That's how... God looks at dishonor. God said, because you have dishonored me, your children have dishonored me, there will be no longer an old man in this house. God said, if you honor me, I'll honor you. If you dishonor me, you'll be lightly esteemed. Do you know what that means? I pray for you that you will understand honor. Amen. And let me say this. Don't allow a little blessing you have 
to get into your head to dishonor, uh, especially a man or a woman of God that God has called to bless you. Never let it happen. I said, today I'm also uh, chief, chief of God. <laughs> Praise God. Number six is glory. Number six is glory. We're still looking at the content of the will. Number six is what? Glory. Exodus chapter 33, verse 18. Moses prayed and said, Lord, please show me your glory. Without the glory of God, we are nothing. The glory of God is the very nature of God. The glory of God is the... Praise God. We'll get there. Hallelujah. I said the glory of God is the very, the, the totality of who God is. That's why God doesn't share his glory with no one. Praise God. A king's glory, it's in, it's, it's in its abundance, its power, its supremacy. So everywhere you see a king, you see his glory. Kings appear by glory. You know the, 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 the power of the king by the size of, uh, what is that thing called? Uh, when kings are going, we should understand this better because we come from, is it palanquin? Palanquin, yeah. Do you know what a palanquin is? It's a bigger version of an umbrella. See, you were born in the city, so you don't know what a palanquin is. A palanquin is a bigger umbrella. It's huge. So the magnitude of the palanquin determines the size of the king. And palanquins come in sizes when kings meet. And we have a king of all kings. Glory be to God. Number seven, the last one is blessing. So what are the seven things? What are the, what's the content of the will? Number one is what? Number one is what? Number two is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Number four is, number five is, number six is, number seven is, glory be to God. Somebody's missing it up. As a matter of fact, do you know, I took a whole year and I preached Revelations 5.12. How many years ago? Five years? Six years? The whole year, the whole year I preached from this scripture. So I love this scripture so much. Praise God. Finally, as we close, two major factors that delays your access to the content of the will. Two major factors that delays your access to the content of the will. Why? Because somebody is saying that if, if Christ has done it, why am I not having it? Why am I not seeing it in my life? Why am I not seeing all these seven things in my life? Where's the riches? Where's the blessing? Where's the power? Where's the strength? Where's the wisdom? Why am I not seeing it? These are the two major factors that delays your access to the contents of the will. Please bear with me because these two things I'm about to share with you, it has given me a lot of sleepless nights, but I want you to understand that these two things is not you here. It's not even those watching the service. It's those outside. Amen? This is not you. So two things, two factors. Number one is irresponsibility. That's why I was test tossing and ten. Somebody would say, Pastor, you're calling me irresponsibility now. That's not you, praise God. I said it's not you. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 2. I read, it says, a wise servant will rule over a son. Look at that. A wise servant will rule over a son who causes shame and will share an inheritance among the brothers. Hallelujah. Now, the sign that a wise servant is ruling over the son simply means 
the, the son, excuse my language, is an irresponsible son. We saw in the Bible, excuse my language, I, Isaac was irresponsible. He didn't want to get married. So Abraham had to get Eliezer to swear, put his hand under his thigh, to go and marry a woman for him. The guy is 40, he's just chopping mommy's and daddy's food. He doesn't care about anything. You know, there are some children, you have to push them. Isaac have to be pushed. But thank God, finally he married. So there are some servants who rule over the sons. Why? Because the son is not being responsible. Reason why many Christians don't access or there's a delay in accessing the contents of the will is simply because many people are not being responsible. God gives them a little blessing and they blow it. God gives them a little power and they, they use it to, to, to oppress people. Number two is immaturity. These are strong words, but uh, it, it's not for you. It's not for those watching. It's for those outside, outside. Amen. Number two is immaturity. But these principles are true. No father will leave a will for a son that is irresponsible. Do you know why uh, when parents, natural parents, leave wills for their children, there's, in this country there is an age the child has to get to before they can access the will or the contents of the will. Why? Because at that time, that child cannot handle all the wealth that the parents are transferring to him or her. Because he or her is, is not responsible. You give them a car, they will smash it now. <laughs> because they are not mature. They don't know the value of it. So, number two is immaturity. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. I read, it says, Now I say that the heir, who is the heir? The one who is supposed to access the wheel, the next in line, the next in line. It says, Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It says, now the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from all from a slave, though he is master of all. Wow. The heir. The heir, as long as he is a child, child in behavior, child is th in thinking. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I behave like a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things and I started behaving maturely. Glory be to God. So it says, now I say to you that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave. My God, what a, what, what, what a comparison between the, the, the heir and the slave. That's sad. That's sad. The slave has no right to access the wheel. But the heir, the heir who is supposed to be the one having access to the full content of the will is being compared to a slave. A slave is an outsider. A slave is not born in the house. A slave doesn't, doesn't have the, the name of the owner of that family or, or the father of that family. It says, but look at what happens. Oh, this is so powerful. It says, though he is master of all. He is master. He is ma you see, I always say this. reason why God delays our blessings is because many Christians can handle it. It's not that God cannot bless us. I'm telling you, it's not, there is no lack in the kingdom of God. 
But the reason why many Christians pray, oh God, bless me, bless me, and God doesn't want to bless them is because they can't handle it. If he gives them the blessing now, it will destroy them. Anything God gives you that takes you away from God, it's not from God. Because the devil can also bless. The devil told Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, he took him to a high mountain and said, if you bow, all these things I will give you. So the devil can also give. But his giving comes with a hook. <laughs> his giving comes with a hook. That's why the Bible says the blessings of the Lord, he make it rich and he adds no sorrow. In God's blessing, there is no sorrow. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. Did I quote Proverbs 10, 22? When we got to blessing? No. I didn't. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm quoting it now because, oh wow, sorry. Anyway, you got it there. Verse 2 of, of um, Galatians chapter 4. It says, but he is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. This is the heir. He is under who? Stewards. Who is a steward? A steward is a caretaker. Who is a guardian? A guardian is a caretaker. He guides you. He polices you. He gives you, your father gives you 100 pounds. He asks. Have you tied 10 pounds? Then that's what the guardian does. He will guide you, police you until you get to that point where if you're able to tithe on 10 pounds, then he say, um, sir, he's mastered 100 pounds. So we can increase it to 200 pounds. And then when you master 200 pounds, and then he'll increase it to a thousand. But until you see, listen, the kingdom of God is you have to pass a test before you are promoted. It's not mass promotion. Doesn't happen in the kingdom. Check everybody that God has worked with. Check. We we say Abraham's blessings are mine. Don't we sing that song? We love it, isn't it? I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. But to have access to Abraham's blessing, you have to do what Abraham did. You have to do what Abraham did. So if you don't want any delays, start doing the words. Amen? amen. I said amen. Amen. Start doing what? Be a doer of the word. Amen? Amen. We are word practitioners, not word hearers. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, let me close on this. Let me close on this. Uh, Three reasons why many Christians are left out of God's will. Three reasons why many Christians are left out of God's will. You say, Pastor, how can that be possible? Let's read the scriptures and we'll see. Number one is dishonor. They dishonor God. They don't honor God. God says, pray. They say, God, I'm tired. I cannot pray. God says, win souls. I cannot win soul. I'm shy. God says, serve, they say, ah, God, don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I'm the damaging man- director of, sorry, sorry, managing director, not damaging director. <laughs> Dishonor. Number two is disloyalty. They are disloyal to everything that is God related. Number three is disobedience. These are the three reasons why some Christians are left out of God's will. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11 and 12. Numbers chapter 14, verse 11 and 12. Listen carefully to this scripture. This is so key. The Bible says that then the Lord said to Moses, 
how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them, I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them. Did you see that? And do what? Disinherit them. What does disinheritance mean? That means you were given, your name was in the will, and because of your actions, your name was removed from the will. I would disinherit them. May God not disinherit you. May God not disinherit you. He said, I would disinherit them and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. He's talking about Moses now. That Moses individually will be mightier than the whole of Israel combined. I pray for you that God will not disinherit you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you receive it? Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I said let's give Jesus some praise. I know this one, you don't like it, but let's give Jesus some praise. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, before we close, um, both here and in India, every eye close, every head bow. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you are here, you're watching live, you are invited to the church, and you're not born again. You're not born again. And you know that if you die today, you'll not make it to heaven. I would like to pray for you. You see, to be a partaker of this will, three things are key. Number one, you must have a relationship with the testator. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of others they will not follow. So number one, there must be a relationship. There must be a relationship. And number two, he has to redeem you. He he did. He died for your sins 2,000 years ago. You see, coming to church is not going to heaven. The church is not heaven. The church will not take you to heaven. Jesus is the only way through which you can go to heaven. So if you are here, You are in India, the church, and you are not born again. And you say, Pastor, I'd like to give my life to Jesus. I'd like to pray for you. Wherever you are in any of those churches, lift up your right hand towards heaven. I'd like to pray for you. Pastor, I would like to give my life to Jesus. I know if I die today, I will not make it to heaven. Pastor, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for you. Let's all say this together and say it from the depths of your heart. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I save you all the days of my life. Jesus, save me, for I cannot save myself. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, if you said that prayer, you are now born again. You are destined for heaven in Jesus' name, amen. Let's let's give Jesus some praise. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Well, now we want to, let's rise up on our feet.